I don't know what you know, but like <laughs> the racing industry is like musical chairs. It it is honestly, but now it's getting the char the chairs are actually getting smaller because with the the new gen card that we got coming out, it's kicking a lot of people out. How so? Uh, the new gen car is actually built by NASCAR, mm. so all the chassis builders are pretty much all gone. Oh, so they just issue you a <clears throat> chassis because yep. it's got to be spec, yep. right? And so, that, I mean, do they keep engineers on just to make sure that they are spec? Oh, yeah. But, but I guess that's kind of an automation issue there, isn't it? Yep. And it's it comes in sections, so you got your front clip, your your center section, and your rear clip. So initially, if you wreck a car, you can literally go out and buy a front clip, <laughs> bolt it on, and then race it next week. Oh, man, see, in the time attack world where I was, if they were out, they were out. Yeah. And that happened. You know, we we would, I mean, luckily the Nissan team I worked with early, um, I guess that was 2013, 14, they had two. And so whenever they'd have an issue, and he didn't wreck much, yeah. but he did have, you know, he'd blow out the front end suspension or something would go weird. Yeah, usually if you blow out something... Or if you wreck one of those, it's pretty well done anyways. Yeah, but they had a duplicate identical. Uh, yeah. Only the paint, was, the paint was different. So that parts car, they would they, it, it ran, but it was basically a parts car, and they would try to keep it running too, but, you know, most yeah, of the time. Yeah, kind of like how our backup car is if we bring one. Well, it was the story would always go, we'd get to the racetrack, they'd test, something would break, and then they would spend the whole like 17 hours they had left before they would go out and ride or run they'd spend that whole time scrambling to fix what broke yeah. and then they would get to the end the fit they'd get to the finish they'd finally have it up and running and they'd go play second mm -hmm. you know <laughs> like that's what they would do yeah and and that was it and then they were like we're so proud of ourselves we've got <laughs> second man that was a lot of work you know yeah and, we're normally second to last but yeah we've actually had a couple or that that picture you saw mm -hmm. on my facebook we actually placed uh, 10th uh, yeah, well i mean so that was like a win for us well that's a really competitive industry though yep. time attack is different yep. i was working with a really big fish in a small pond salt lake especially is a small pond yeah the guy, when I told him I was leaving I was like hey man you know I'm just kind of burned out out here we're moving back to North Carolina. He's like, what are you going to do out there? How are you going to make a living out there? I'm like, I'll be fine if I'm in Charlotte, dude. Yep. Like, do you have any idea? He had no idea. Like, <laughs> race city. It is. I mean, there's, I mean, you can get into any, the, the disciplines of racing too. I mean, yep. from motocross to dirt track to, I mean, come on. Yeah, we've got a couple, like, uh, Le Mans cars. Yeah. Uh, there's one in Gaffney, South Carolina, I think. Yeah. Um, Auto, auto sport, uh, motor sports, I think. Yeah. They have a, a Porsche 911 and also a Le Mans car. Really? The last racing event that I did properly, I mean, I've gone out and hung out with my cousin and stuff. He's a motocrosser. But the last one I did was Road Atlanta in 2016. I was burned out, though. Like, yeah. That was my last hurrah for, like, chasing it. Mm -hmm. because I I did a whole bunch of marketing up to the event. The promoter, and we can get into promoters if you want, but the promoter, he let me in, and he gave me, like, you know, for that event, I was the media guy. Right. Right, and so I was able to connect myself to, like, I think it was, like, technically it was, like, 10 racing teams paid me in some capacity or another, but about four or five paid me well for video work mm -hmm. so i was doing photography and video and i would have some people just throw me 100 bucks for photography but then i'd have a few really come in for video work and that's how i made money right and uh but i found at the end i just broke even i mean i probably made a, a grand or two yeah but it, for me to keep that up like i'd have to be gone every weekend i'd have to travel like <laughs> like the circus <laughs> yep <laughs> That's why, I, that's why I say I work for the I work for the traveling circus. Oh, you say that. Mm -hmm. So, I looked at your schedule just before you got in here, and you have three teams underneath uh, the team you work for. What's his name again? 
Who, B.J. McLeod? B.J. BJ McLeod's team. Mm-hmm. And so there are three teams. Do, you, do they just throw you on one or another, or uh, are you strictly with one Normally team? I'm with the 78, but they've been moving numbers around. So if the 99's behind in points, we'll move the numbers around, or move the drivers around to that number to boost that uh, car back up. So the drivers aren't stuck with one car. They can... Uh, because you know you can't change your NFL n- number. In no, the, you can't just go. Well, I'm not number one anymore. I'm number forty four. Yeah. So they can do that. Uh, yeah, they have to get it approved by NASCAR. Oh, okay. So, okay. Like we've had um, Kevin Harvick drive our ninety nine car just to boost up the points in it, even though it hurt us a little bit more at Indy. Yeah. Ran over what we call a turtle, which is a big speed bump or. or curb type deal. Yeah. And it pops his front end up, ripped the splitter off and oh, man. uh sway bar arm. So, what are you gonna do? I mean he was probably doing a hundred and something. Yeah, he was up front for yeah. the back back. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So how did you make the leap into racing? I saw you went to school for NASCAR mechanics, right? Yep. Uh I went to NASCAR Tech and I graduated out of there started tw- uh May of 2013, or okay. 12, and graduated in 13. So, but there was this, there was about a decade there in between high school mm-hmm. and NASCAR where yeah. you were doing something else. Uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that were just you, to figure out. Were who you I a mechanic? Well, uh, at, at times, yeah. Yeah. What did you do other than work on cars and stuff? Go to races. You just go to <laughs> races? I mean, I've been around racing since I was two weeks old, so yeah. that's all I knew. Yeah. And every chance I got, I went to a track. Now, did your your daddy do that too? Or mm-hmm. Really? He, uh, he started out in Agawam, Massachusetts, uh, lettering race cars. Really? Literally hand painting numbers. And so he was the graphic designer yeah. then, basically, for yeah. those cars. It's its Back own in, in the 70s. It's his own industry, though, right yep. there. I mean, you're not even it's working. It's a dying art. You're not working on cars, you're rec- painting well, them. He was also he was also working on them, too. Oh, okay. And he moved down south when his when his dad moved down here, and uh, started up Williams Auto, and that was our family business. And he found Hickory Speedway, so he started doing stuff there too, and raced raced at Hickory. We, I mean, we've been to Tri County, Hickory, and North Wilkesboro pretty much every weekend. 